We all like free, right? Free food, free rooms, free VTubing. I can't do anything about the first two, but I can help with the last one. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about how you can get started with a 3D model using Vroid Hub and a program called V Magic Mirror. This is as free as it gets. You don't even need a webcam. This should be looked at as a test to see if you even enjoy VTubing. Let's get into it. Vroid Hub is the web hosted service linked to the program called Vroid Studio. This is a program that lets you create and modify Vroid models for free. You can download it from vroid.com or you can install it directly through Steam. To explore the entirety of this program would take dozens of videos. There's just so much you can do with it if you are willing to invest the time. But that's not why it's important. Occasionally, people upload their model to the hub for others to use. It's those models we're going to look at. We're going to start by going to hub.vroid.com and then navigating to the search bar. What we're looking for are models that are free and that creators have designated as usable by anyone. For this example, we're going to type in free and then go to the filter by conditions of use. We're going to select third party use so you can use it, download use, commercial use for profit if you are using this for streaming or non-profit if you are just testing it. And I'll leave it up to you whether you want to select attribution. If you don't select it, that means you have to make sure that you display who made the model you are using, whether that's in the description of your YouTube videos or a panel on your Twitch stream. We're going to download Adorable Neko Girl by Aranza. When you go to the webpage, you'll see the character do a bunch of default poses. This will give you a good idea of what it's going to look like when using it in the Magic Mirror. If you like what you see, scroll down to use this model. You will need to create a Pixiv account if you don't already have one. Once logged in, you'll have to accept the conditions of your model and then you're good to download. Now we're going to download the Magic Mirror. I'll leave all the links to all the websites I'm using down in the description. We're going to download the free version, but if you do enjoy using the program, please buy the Boost version. It's just a way to support the creator. There's no hidden features, but for $1, it's a small way to show your support. After you extract the file and run the program, you will be greeted by the home screen of the Magic Mirror. The first thing we are going to do is load the VRM file we downloaded by clicking on load file on PC. You will once again have to confirm that you are using the license we saw earlier and upon clicking OK, the model should now be viewable. The default tracking will have the head's gaze follow your mouse movement while the arms will swap between keyboard and mouse depending on what you are doing. If you are not using either for a long time, the arms will fall to your side for a more natural standing pose. When your model first loads, you may notice it's a little out of position. All you need to do to fix that is click on Adjust Size by VRM. If for some reason that doesn't work, I will go over how to manually correct it later. The other button you will want to click on is Load Current VRM on Next Setup. This just saves the hassle of needing to reload the same model every time you start the program. You can change your language down here and have the program open every time you log in. I don't recommend doing that as there is no reason to leave it open if you are not using it. Here is a link to the online manual and below it are the screenshot settings. The screenshot button begins a three second timer and the saved folder allows you to change where your screenshots are stored. The settings files section allows you to save all the settings you have changed to either save slots or you can export them as a backup and re-import them later. We're now going to get into settings. This is where most, if not all, of your fine tuning will happen. First up is window. Basic settings allow you to make the window transparent instead of a green screen. You can also change the background image. The wind transparent options allow you to move your character when transparent window is selected. Always foreground means you always see what your character is doing because it's always on top of every other application. I recommend turning transparency on, but leaving the other two options off as you'll be using OBS or Streamlabs to show it to your viewers anyways. Background lets you change the background color. Character transparency support chooses when the character goes transparent. I recommend just leaving the settings as they are. Face settings. Lip sync makes your character's mouth move when you talk. 
Simply select the microphone and then you can adjust the sensitivity until the mouth movement looks the way that you want. You can enable face tracking here by selecting your webcam. However, this does not turn off the mouse tracking, which is in the next section. In eye settings, you can turn on blink adjust and change the eye look target. If you are using a webcam, I recommend setting it to user. If you aren't using a webcam, leave it at mouse. Eye motion scale controls just how much the eye moves, so turn it up for some pretty funny effects. Finally, we arrive at blend shapes. These are probably better known as expressions. If your character has blend shapes made, you can set one as a default, but I don't recommend changing any of these settings right now. Arriving at the motion section, we have the option of changing how our upper body moves. You can have it in always hands down mode if you don't want to look like it's typing or moving the mouse. You can also change what the mouse and gamepad movement look like. Presentation changes the mouse to a pointed finger, while pen tablet makes you look like you are drawing. Arm settings allow you to modify your shoulder motion. I'll be honest though, I haven't noticed much of a difference with it on or off. You can adjust your waist width, which might help with some clipping issues. And finally, the strength setting, which only seems to affect models that I've tested if I push it to really high or really low settings. FPS assumed mode means it moves around less. You can also change the typing animation to be random keys in case you are worried about people reading your keyboard input. Show pointer support puts a circle around your cursor and you can adjust the size of that circle with the slider. The hand settings let you modify your hand ever so slightly, play around with them to see what you like. Finally, weight motion puts a timer on the model. If it doesn't detect any movement from the mouse or keyboard, the arms will slowly fall back to the side of the model. Moving on to layout. This is where you really get to decide how your model looks. Free camera mode allows you to move your model in the following ways. Holding right click and moving rotates your model. Holding middle click lets you drag it around and scroll wheel lets you zoom in or out. Here is also where you can adjust the field of view if you don't want to use the scroll wheel. You can have up to three positions saved in the quick save slots, allowing you to have different setups built in for easy swapping. Free layout in the devices allows you to move your keyboard and mouse pad in any direction, rotation, or size that you wish. This can help your model look a little bit more natural with the keyboard and mouse positioning. Device visibility lets you turn the devices shown on or off. If you want to know how to change the appearance of those devices, you can click on the web link provided. The effects panel controls all of the lighting or color effects you want to apply. Quality determines how pixelated your model is, which is useful if your computer has a hard time running the program. Light allows you to change how strong the light is, as well as the angle it is shining from. Shadow does a similar effect as lighting, though it only amplifies the shadows on your character. If you're using transparency, just turn this off. Bloom gives you that anime kind of glow. Wind applies to any parts of your model that have bone physics and should affect things like hair, tails, or clothing. Devices allow you to change settings for things like a game controller or a MIDI controller. Words to motion allows you to activate your expression in a number of ways. The default is keyboard word, which means if you want to use the joy expression, you type joy. And it lasts for a few seconds. Alternatively, you can use a gamepad, number pad, or MIDI controller to use expressions. We're going to skip over the automation settings as there really isn't a reason to use them. The next tab of settings is the streaming tab, which is actually just a condensed version of the settings you will use on a regular basis. Window, face, motion, view, camera, device layout, and word to motion. The final tab, EX tracker, Short for external tracker allows you to connect to external apps like iFacial mocap or others that allow advanced facial tracking. Now that we've got our model all set up, let's put it into your streaming software. For this, I'll be showing off OBS, which is also free to download. You're going to go to scenes, click the plus sign, go to game capture, name it what you want, then change the mode to specific window, Find vmagicmirror.exe and then select Allow Transparency. 
remember to turn transparency on in VMagic Mirror. Congratulations, you're now a VTuber who has spent exactly $0 to get a model moving and into recording software. I'm going to say what I said at the start. This should be viewed as a test to see if VTubing is something you enjoy doing. If it is, you're probably going to customize your avatar using programs like Vroid Studio, which is also free, or maybe commissioning one that fits you very well. As always, I hope this video helped. If it did, leave a comment letting me know and join our community Discord, where I'm usually available to answer any questions. I'll see you all next time.